Well, hello again, and welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Erbrish. Today we're going to continue on in our study in the book of Genesis. And we're going to be in chapter 4 today. And if you take a close uh, study of chapter 4, it shows that uh, there is a, a close connection with chapter 3. In chapter 3, we see the beginning of sin in man. In chapter 4, we will see the progress and the fruits thereof. You know, one of the great principles shown in each chapter is that God can only be approached by sinful men, by means of a blood sacrifice. This was true through the Old Testament, and it's true even in the New Testament. In verse 21, the Lord God made coats of skin and clothed them. There was bloodshed to do this. This was the first gospel sermon ever preached on earth. By clothing Adam and Eve with these skins, God taught them four lessons. And here are the four lessons. One, in order for guilty sinners to approach a holy God, he needs a suitable covering. Two, uh, that the aprons of fig leaves, which their hands had made, were not acceptable to him. Three, that God himself must provide the covering. And four, that the necessity for covering could only be obtained through death. Well, these are the essentials in the gospel message which we preach today. Man is lost in sin and cannot approach God without a wedding garment. All his righteousness are as filthy rags. God himself must provide the means of sa uh, salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. This salvation could only be obtained through the death of another. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist said this in John 1, 29. All this was ex was accomplished at Calvary by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the only way of salvation, for there is no other name given under heaven where a man may, might be saved. And the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I believe it is necessary to understand the principles laid down in chapter 3 to get the import of the right uh, and the wrong of chapter 4. Well, the progress of time, Cain and Abel were born. It is uh, beyond question that these young men knew how to approach God. Their parents had to have taught them. We see this in Hebrews 11.4. It tells us, that it was by faith that Abel presented his sacrifice to God. And then in Romans 10, 17, it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, the time came when it was an opportune or necessary for these young men to approach God on their own. And this comes about with everybody. They'll reach an age where they can't rely on their parents. They have to do it on their own. Now, this is the first act of worship recorded in human history. It, it, in coming to God, uh, Cain and Abel are representatives of the two great classes of people. And let's look at six things here. One... They uh, typify the lost and the saved. Two, the self-righteous and the broken-spirited repentant. Three, the formal professor and the genuine believer. Four, 
those who rely on their own works and those who rest on the finished work of Christ. 5. Those who insist upon salvation by human merit and those who are willing to be saved by divine grace. And the last six, those who are rejected and cursed by God, and those who are accepted and blessed. Into one of these classes, all of humanity falls. Verse 3, Cain offered the fruit of the ground. Cain was not an infidel or an atheist. He acknowledged the existence of God. He was prepared to worship him, but in his own way. He, his offering was a bloodless one. Uh, it was the fruit of his own toils, the toil of his ground, the work of his own hands. No doubt it was a very beautiful sacrifice or offering, but the tragic thing about this is that in presenting this offering, it offended God because he didn't do it the way God wanted it to be done. Now let's look at four things. Cain deliberately turned his back on God's revealed will. Two, he denied that it was that he was a fallen creature. Three, uh, he denied that he was a guilty sinner. And four, he approached God on the grounds of per personal worthlessness. Where Cain represents the natural man, and it's true today, those who turned their back upon a blood of the cross. Now, Cain represents a class of people who rejects the finished work of Christ and who uh, depends on the work of righteousness. Cain is the father of the Pharisees who pride themselves that he is superior and to continuous publican uh, and who boasts of moral and self-righteousness. In Jude 11, it says this, Woe unto them who have gone the ways of Cain. And Isaiah 64, 6, it says, All our righteousness is as filthy rags. The story of the... There was a story of a rich lady whose servant had been saved. And because of this, pride kept her from coming uh, to the Savior because she didn't want to lower herself and be like her servant and be saved by the blood of Christ. She thought she could work her way into God's graces. But that's not true. Verse 4, verse four Abel brought of the firstling of his flock. And the Lord had respect for Abel and his offering. Now let's look at three things. In the bringing this offering, Abel confessed that he was a fallen creature and a guilty sinner. Two, he acknowledged that he was, he was worthy of death. And three, by offering a lamb, he admitted that his only hope of salvation was in the shedding of the blood. This is what his parents had taught him. He believed it and by faith presented his offering to God. This is what constitutes saving faith. It is believing God's word and acting on it. Cast your net on the right side of the ship. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The picture now of the offering lies on the altar, waiting for God's approval. By comparing uh, 
uh, later scriptures, we may safely assume that God showed his acceptance by consuming the offering by fire. So then, as the two brothers uh, waited for God to speak, fire suddenly appeared and consumed the lamb. Cain's sacrifice was left intact on the altar. The difference between Cain and Abel was not their, uh, in their character, but in their offering, their sacrifice. In one word, it was a, the difference of blood. Abel was accepted because he offered to God a, a bleeding lamb. Cain was rejected because he refused to offer such. Here then, we trace back to the uh, fountainhead of the two streams which empty themselves into heaven or in hell. The divine line between them is blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. There was a dividing line between the Egyptians and the Israelites. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, Exodus 12. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, Luke 18. The final test in the last day of judgment. All those whose names are not found written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire. The tragedy of refusing the blood. Well... When did Cain get his wife? Well, he got her from the land of Nod when in his wanderings. The first instant of polygamy is with Lemich in verse 19. When Cain found that his offering had been rejected by God, he was very angry. And people today are very angry when they hear the gospel and realize that their good works will not get them to heaven. In verse 6, God asked him why he was angry. In verse 7, God then reasons with Cain, if you had offered the correct sacrifice, would you not have been accepted? The act of refusal subtained the fact of his guilt. Well, yet there was no sign of repentance. God then offered a remedy. A sin offering lies at the tent door. You know, the same word, the Hebrew word, can be translated sin or sin offering. I know through Cain had refused uh, to come in the appointed way. God made another appeal to him to bring the required offering. Though Cain had refused to come in the appropriate way, God made another appeal for him to bring the required offering. You know, I repeat that because it's so important to know that there's always a way if you listen to God. He eventually refused, and as far as we know, was lost. You know, Cain's worship, like many in our day, were merely a uh, form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Second Timothy 2, 3, 5. Well, the lacking genuineness of reality, you know, you look at the story of the, the Pharisee and the publican, that widow's might, you know, is really the heart. You know, you have those that were thrown in of their abundance. A lot of it was just an hypocrisy, an act to show others that they were religious. There is a way which seems right unto man, but in the end is death. Read Proverbs fourteen twelve and sixteen twenty eight. Uh, conversion is of the intellect, the emotion, the will. It's of the heart. 
Cain refused God's appointed way of salvation. Present the way and point. This is the plan of salvation. We don't offer our sacrifice to God. We offer his sacrifice back to God. We rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. The right sacrifice will get you to heaven. And that's what salvation is all about. Man's ruins and God's remedy. And it's man's responsibility to believe it and to accept it. Now, will you accept this way? In other words, will you accept Jesus Christ or will you be like Cain and refuse it? We come now to the murder of Abel. In verse 8, it tells us that Cain slew his brother Abel. When asked by God where Abel was, Cain replied, Am I my brother's keeper? Verse 9. Well, verse 10, the voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. Sin cannot be hidden. You know, tribes and families uh, and households, you know, men by men, God saw Cain's crime and God sees every sin. This is a solemn lesson. Be not deceived. Your sin will find you out. Be sure your sin will find you out. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid nor shall be not known. Simon the Saucer. Cain made no attempt to confess his sins. Instead, he tried to cover it up. But Abel's blood cried to God from the ground. Verse 11, Cain was cursed. Verse 12, the ground would withhold the substance from him. He would be a fugitive and a wanderer all his life. The day of reckoning. Read Ecclesiastics 11.9. Cut off from God. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Verse 13, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Oh. Someday, if you don't receive Christ, your punishment will be greater than you can bear. Although realizing something of what he had done, his mind is more occupied with his punishment than with the sin that caused it. This will be the cry of the lost in the lake of fire. The punishment of the unsaved is unbearable, but will have to be endured forever. Luke 16. Look, think about the great gulf it talks about. From your face shall I be hidden. Cain dreaded that thought. Well, this will be one of the most terrible features of a sinner's punishment, eternal banishment from God. And that's a spiritual death, separation. Alone in the blackness of darkness. Verse 16, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. What a tragedy! His descendants were destroyed in the flood. They were cleaved by godless, godlessness. Seth was born. Man began to call on God. Well, Peter went out from the presence of Christ and wept bitterly. Judas went out from the presence of Christ, and it was night. Just think about these words. He was in darkness, spiritual darkness. He could have repented and would have been forgiven. Now I'm just going to describe his death. He ran out and he hung himself. In doing so, uh, his bowels gushed out and he went headlong down into uh, off a cliff. 
So the blood of Abel is mentioned in the New Testament in Abel, in Hebrews 12:24 and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks of something better than Abel's does thinking about Christ his blood is so precious you know Abel's blood cried for judgment the blood of Christ brings peace and forgiveness the blood of Jesus Christ, God's own Son, cleanses us from all sin. The end.